Hello and welcome back, dear friends. It's me, Odo. We are back in our campaign of um, Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Um, in between episodes, I was moving out of the city and I was moving with my smaller new army down there and defeated a level 4 army, which was rather easy. We didn't lose anyone. Although we are only level 3, that's great, I think. And we got a lot of experience. Um, we want... what do we want? Shield of Faith? No, Bless? Nah. Bane? Hmm. Probably not. Probably better Bless. All units in the army gain plus 1 builders to attack for 3 rounds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think this is better than the attacking spells. And we got another level. That's nice. Master of Maneuver. Really? We could take another. We could take another troop inside. And another war. A lot of level up we did with this thing. We got 5,000 XP from this battle. Heroism, Cure Wounds. Yeah, of course, we'll take the Cure Wounds. That's really great. And let's move back. Let's put some other army there. We have three level 1 armies. These and... There's our level 7 army. They already went. Hmm. And we are not able to buy at the moment. Buy duelists. Could we buy duelists? Yeah. Good. No, we can't. Little too little of the... Hmm. So probably, that's, what's that, that's Paladins, and what do we have here, Bandits, Rogues, and Rangers, there are two Paladins with hit points 91, Cold Iron Long Swords, and we have 10, 10, Short sword, short bow. He's got nine. Yeah, let's move them down. You move back. Nice, nice, nice. So, okay, let's move. Uh, where do we need to go? Uh, Heaven's Edge. We need to go there. And that's in the vicinity, I guess. Like here. Let's move here. And we have Darren with us, so that's okay. <clears throat> oh, this is even... This is also so slow here. Really, really slow. Really slow. Slow. Why is it so slow? Okay. Uh, cancel. 
Let's just move to Heaven's Edge. Middle game. Build the main stables in Dresden. Ah, oh, that's nice. Okay, no. Now we take a we take a nap. But before we take a nap, we just look at the crew bit. Because there was there is something happened. Orders to Irobath. Ah Ah, we have to do it here. Hmm. Irobath has been appointed squad commander in the Vanguard. Okay. Good. Distributing provisions. Crusade morale increases by 10 to 15. That's good, I guess. So, color, colored, color red. Ah, oh, cat, hello, dear friend. I, I will just do this and then I'll feed you. Okay, a Jalaxian lord with an escort of battle slaves wishes to join the crusade. But many crusaders loathe slavery. They are asking the commander to free the trolls and banish the out. Lexian. Infernal Chadiax remains one of the most powerful military nations in the inner sea region. Well, we are true neutral, so we don't have anything against evil. As long as it doesn't remove the, the power balance between all the others. Uh, buy, and buy and free the slaves. Hmm, we could buy them. Crusade moral increases by 25, deduct 22. Accept new troops. Lawful. Four battle slaves are recruited at the commander's headquarters. Mm, I don't think that they are really important. Uh, free the slaves by force. Crusade moral increases by 25, deduct thousand diplomacy experience point. Option is unavailable because you did not choose the path of Asata. Okay. We could do this. Boost our morale. And, but this costs a lot. This really costs a lot. I don't think that four battle slaves are so interesting. I think the moral is better. Let's buy them. Or let's do something chaotic. Sometimes it's also okay to do chaotic, isn't it? So we have to do a lawful thing next. Can someone please write this down? Two more decrees. Okay, we have... Uh, a diplomatic and a logistic way just around the development of the art of war. They who do not seek to know their enemy and, f and fail to forge new paths to victory will inevitably fall. The secret of success lies in officers' steadfast focus and strategy, the ability to learn from past experiences and the, pre and the preparation of future soldiers for future battles. Requires military and one day to soul yeah, well it doesn't cost anything so let's issue this decree strengthening diplomatic connections where financing the crusade is costly process blah, 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 blah. okay good we can't do it by now but soon logistic diplomacy and military so we need this thing do we have this thing? Whatever this thing is. No. No decree about this thing. <laughs> What's this thing? Leadership. No leadership decree. Hmm. Yeah, can't do anything about that. Ooh. We could level up military. That we will do next, probably. Level up is probably always good to do. Uh, 
Okay. Now, how late is it? Mm -hmm. Let's sleep. Let's take 10. I mean, yeah, you could do this, but we can't scribe spells because we don't have any scribe scrolls. Uh, we don't have any uh, feet doing this. We probably should should stop doing the things that they pro they they say we should do. Hmm. Let's begin rest because I really want to. A plant, right? Something like water hemlock. Really? And lawn is some specimen of underground fauna, like a horned toad. Hmm. Nice. Nice together. <clears throat> okay, let's enter. And let's do something there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we do here. Ah, this is the party. I think it's a party. Where is my pig? Why is my pig, pig not invited to the party? Why couldn't all these aristocrats just stay in Cannabis? Why have a feast in this first place? Because we can. Crusader, Regil, Great Boar. Regil really hates this. I'm pretty sure about that. Oh, a lot of corrupt people. My not so numerous, but nonetheless dearest guests. About a year ago at my last birthday party, I assured you all that I nurtured a deep-seated hatred for boring people who give protracted speeches in the misplaced belief that their inner thoughts are of any interest to anyone but themselves. Now I am a whole year older, and also a full-fledged crusader, an honorable position that requires me to be as dull, pedantic, and vexing as I possibly can. <laughs> Therefore, a speech it is. Ah, oh, thank you. I really don't care. The revered cleric Nestrin, my guardian and tutor, often told me that those who live a sinful life may expect to join the abyssal hordes after they die. This is why their path is the most despicable of all. A part of their soul may return to Mendev in the abominable form of a demonic invader. Mm, yeah. Every time we see a demon, we might as well think about it. What if this wretched creature used to be your great-great-grandfather? What if certain parts of this pointy-tailed beauty used to belong to your pious cousin? They say that the demons represent the sins of the souls they are made of. Succubi emerge out of lustful souls. Vandals turn into Abracandilu. Gluttons become Nabasu. I, for one, am determined to commit as many different sins as possible, so that the distributive <laughs> mechanism of the Abyss breaks when it tries to decide what to do with my soul. Yeah, that's nice. You, my dearest guests, will be my assistants in this complicated task. Eat, drink, and indulge yourselves in whatever vices you can. Let nobody leave this house as righteous as they entered it. Live every day like it's your last. After all, nobody knows when that day will arrive, do they? Yeah. Here. Okay, not many people capping, not too good the speech.
Hey, Hawkblade, this is the guy who wanted me to enter here. How interesting. Inquisitor Leotr whispers in your ear from behind. Did you find anything interesting? Nothing, really. I just took note of a few things. I attempted to find out whether anything unusual or mysterious has happened to the Count over the last ten years. During my conversations with his acquaintances, two people noted that he never speaks of the revered Nestrin, the priest of Iomide, who has his who was his guardian and tutor. Yet he just mentioned Nestrin in his speech, whatever that might mean. You told me that you tried to find out if anything odd had happened to Darren over the last ten years. Some of his servants complained about strange occurrences in the house, like objects object, objects moving by themselves or candles going out. Of course, that could simply be a figment of their imagination. It's also very well known that the Count often invites various spellcasters to entertain him and encourages them to use their magic in mischievous ways. Practically, the whole Mendeth knows the story about the three drunk wizards and their teleportation race across the roofs of Canabras after a party at the Count's house. What I'm trying to say there, there is that any fluctuations in residual magic at this house are not at all there was the matter of the abduction, however. A gang of bandits kidnapped the Count, hoping for a ransom, but the only reward they got was death. Afterward, the Count told everyone that he had hired the bandits himself as a joke. The other mercenary squad that freed him and executed the bandits was also in his employ. Ah, oh, that's not really nice. Nobody really wanted to delve too deep into this case after confirming the, the identities of those wretched cutthroats. But there was one disturbing fact about it all, and I don't mean the Count's bizarre idea of fun. The mercenaries who supposedly freed him had also cut off the bandits' heads after they had already killed them. Cut off? You mean the bandits who attacked her? Yes. Perhaps I wouldn't have even noticed this detail had I not visited Heaven's Edge right after the tragic incident. I remember that we also found several headless bodies, both of guests and demons. We thought they had been decapitated during the fight. So it's like trauma that he behaves like he behaves? My companions have been finding severe heads among their belongings recently. Strangely, things like this weren't a problem before Darren joined the party. Well, but didn't we know that Nuria was doing that? What? That is an alarming coincidence. Now, we have another reason to conduct an investigation. It is crucial that we find out what exactly happened at their tragic feast. What do you need to do, Inquisitor? Now, that's the hardest part. I need to dive deep into the past of this place, which requires casting several different spells over some time. It would be very convenient for me if nobody interrupted the process, especially the Count himself. I don't think he remembers my face, but a suspicious stranger casting unknown spells might attract his attention. All in all, what I want you to do is to distract the master of the house. Right now, he's playing host in the very place. I'd like to start with. So, how do I distract him? Mm, flirt with him, probably. I don't know, maybe your companions can assist you somehow. Or you can take a look around. Perhaps there's something that you can help us. Yeah, okay. Good luck. Come back to me when the Count leaves. I will tell you everything I managed to find out, and maybe even show you something. Okay. So, Drunk Noble, Drunk Noble, Drunk Noble, Social. 
Hey, social guy. I can imagine how lovely this manor must have been. Okay. There is Darren. Noble, sealer, land. Yeah, let's, let's try to capitalize land. So I've somehow landed at the party of a royal brat. Fig. You never know when or if you'll get another chance to rest and have some fun. There is Camellia. Let's talk to her. More of a distracting kind. Uh, probably not. Okay, let's look around. Ooh, ooh. Loot. <laughs> <laughs> Why help someone if you can loot the place? Should have fought before. Let's collect everything. There's more loot. More. More loot. What's this? The decorative plants are in a miserable state. They've neglected they've been neglected for many years. Okay. Chuck of wine I used creatively. Let me distract the count. Ah. Okay. Let's talk to Darren then. Darren, who has been watching the guests with an unreadable expression, turns his head to you and says in a casual tone, like he's continuing a conversation that was interrupted, I have always considered myself an esteemed, not a hero. When doomsday comes, I thought I'd pour myself a glass of hundred-year-old wine, sit in the front row and just watch the world burn. Playing the violin was also an option. Now I'll be damned if I know how I ended up in the Fifth Crusade. How did I become the companion of a hero chosen by Aomida? I'm not chosen by Aomida. It, uh, it was our destiny to end up together. Eh. Perhaps this is your chance to finally do something worthwhile. Eh. Sometimes the most casual occurrences dictate our fate. Yeah, why not? I'm afraid that is not always the case. Sometimes it is dictated by alien, a totally deliberate force. Tell me more about Heaven's Edge. This estate was once a truly beautiful site with its lush gardens and placid bonds. The house itself is not that large, however. This land was part of the border region, even before the world wound, so my ancestors took that into account when laying the foundation. The larger the mansion, the harder it is to defend. Create the fire suppression system to distract the count. Interesting. You do remember that you are. S uh, wait, what? I'd gladly give you a tour, but I'm afraid there's not much to see here. I didn't have much time, so my servants only managed to clean up this yard, the great hall, and a couple of rooms. There is nothing interesting about them except perhaps the magical firefighting system powered by water elementals. I'm not sure it's still functioning, though. Ah, this could turn him away. Do you remember that you are still my field attaché and plenipotentiary um, something, Count? I demand a report of all your work so far in half an hour. Nah. So why did you really decide to throw a party at the scene of such a tragedy? What's this ghoulish farce all about? What an odd feeling it's like. I had been lying under the sun in a spectacular meadow in full bloom, and then you barge in, 
pour a bucket of ice cold water all over me? Is this how you treat people who invite you to their celebrations? No, you don't have to answer. I could come up with a polite excuse, but I'd rather match your courteous manners and put it bluntly. I do not wish to continue this conversation. Thank you for ruining my mood. I shall retire to my chambers for a time. Oh. This was easy. <laughs> okay. There is a naked person. didn't want to do this. I see that you did your part, Commander. Thank you. I'll get ready to watch and listen closely. I will unravel the past of this place and try to show you whatever I find. Okay, let's do so. Okay, you're pushing around some things. Countess Selena Arende. Some of voices, laughter, and music fills your mind. Then the visions come fragmented. In okay, my dear guests, the Lady of Heaven's Edge welcomes all of you today. I hope this day is as bright for you as it is for me. Because this day, my only precious some times arrogant but utterly beloved child was born. So it was his birthday. The child is usually a reflection of their parents and caretakers. Countess, will you allow the humble tutor of this young man to address the guests and the man of the hour as well? A new face appears. It is a handsome old man with a strong dignified posture and a voice that emanates power. Can't we have just one day without your sermons? It's my birthday after all. Ten years ago, the young Darren had an utterly angelic appearance. His table manners and expression lacked the dignity of a true angel, however. Uh, they, I'm sure the Reverend Nestrin, only wanted to hug you and offer you his best wishes on your birthday. Wait, what? What's that noise? Oh, uh -huh. Lily told the shrill laughter rings in your ears and reverberates in the base of your skull. In the vision, a Lily too appears before the guests of fate and gives them an exaggerated, scornful bow. The sorceress of evil has come to your celebration, mortals. Did you prepare a treat for me too? What do you want, spawn of the abyss? I've already done everything I wanted to. Hey, you, doddering cleric. Look around. Don't you notice anything odd? Bag is in your wine, in your food, in the air around you, in your blood. Soon you will all die. Pray to your pathetic goddess and call upon your healing powers all you want. But they are not going to help you. Nothing will help you. I will give you a chance to see it yourself for yourselves. And when I return, the grave realization will have already sunk its teeth into your Oh, how I love watching mortals in their final desperate hours. The demon finishes her speech with an air kiss to Darren, making him freeze in horror and disappears. Okay. That's it. 
Uh, the first appearance of the disease and the Lily too, one of the many sisters of the cursed Minago. So far, everything I've seen matches the official version of Evenge. Evenge. <laughs> who, were, who were the people in the vision? Surely the cleric could have done something. Countess Selena Arende was Darren's mother and one of the most beautiful women in the history of Mendev. She was an Asimar, just like her son. The old man is the esteemed cleric Nestrin, our Count's guardian and tutor. He was well known for his unfaltering faith and iron will. I was only passing acquaintances with him, so I can't tell you anything more than that. I didn't recognize the others, but Darren told me that the first victims of the disease were the, his second cousin and the cousin's wife, hailing from the eastern border. Surely the cleric could have done something. I can't say for certain, but I believe there was nothing he could have done. Magical diseases are already difficult enough to cure, and this bug struck very fast indeed. Now we must find out what happened next. What now? I can sense the aftershocks of a very strong outburst of emotions and memories somewhere in the west wing of the house. Something must have happened in one of the rooms, so please check if anyone is in there and distract them if need be. Okay. So we must lure Darren out again? Hmm. Okay. Uh, then, my dear friends, I will stop here for today. I hope you enjoyed it. See you soon. Bye.